Hello everybody. I'm your host Frank with FJB Custom Woodcrafts and I'd like to welcome you back as we begin our next tutorial on CNC woodworking for beginners. Today we're going to apply what we've learned about the combined modes in Vectric software to create an attractive project consisting of a 3D model placed in a dished recess. For users of Vectric Aspire, rather than use a model from the clipart folder or creating our own 3D model, I'll show you how to convert a grayscale height bitmap file into a 3D component and then show you the technique to place it in the dished recess to assure no part of the 3D component protrudes higher than the dish opening. If you are using Vectric VCarve, you will not be able to use this technique since many of the tools we're going to use are only available in Aspire. Instead of converting a grayscale height bitmap file into a 3D model, just use a 3D component of your choice located in your clipart folder instead of the model I use in this tutorial. I would encourage you, however, to download the free version of Aspire so you can learn the technique I will be showing you. Let's get to it. Create a new single-sided job with a width of 9.75 inches, height of 12 inches, and material thickness of 0.75 inches. Set the Z0 position to the material surface, XY datum position to the bottom left, modeling resolution to high, and click OK. We will first create a 2D ellipse vector that defines the size and shape of the dished recess we want to use for the project. Use the ellipse tool to draw an ellipse with a width of 8.75 inches and a height of 11 inches. Close the tool, select the ellipse, and press F9 on the keyboard. F9 is the keyboard shortcut to center a selected object or objects in the material. Now that we have the ellipse created, let's find a nice grayscale height bitmap that we can use for our project. If you do a web search for a grayscale height map and switch to the images filter in the search engine, you will find images that can be either purchased or used for free depending on the licensing associated with the image. We're going to peruse a website that offers free bitmap files. Go to 3axis.co and search grayscale. This should bring up several grayscale height maps. Let's download the ship bitmap located on page two. Next, go back to the drawing tab in your software and import the downloaded bitmap using the import bitmap tool. We don't have to take the next step since the final 3D composite model will appear identical, but doing it will make it easier to properly place the ship in the dish with the additional benefit of giving us more practice using the trace bitmap tool. With the bitmap selected, click the trace bitmap tool. Set the tool to black and white with the number of colors set to minimum. Leave the next three settings at their default values, uncheck group vectors, and click preview. Since the newly created vector encloses everything we're interested in, click apply and close the tool. Turn off the bitmap layer and delete the square vector. Now let's organize our layers. First, rename layer one dish. Then select all the vectors except the ellipse, right click and add the selected vectors to a new layer named ship. For reasons that will become clear shortly, delete all the smaller vectors within the boundary of the larger ship vector. Then group the remaining vectors located in the ship layer by pressing G on the keyboard. Now turn on the visibility of the bitmap layer and turn off the visibility of the ship and dish layers. With the bitmap layer active, select the bitmap, switch to the modeling tab, and click on the create a component from selected or imported bitmap tool. Notice that a new component has been added to level one in the component tree. Rename the component ship 
tile the 2D and 3D views vertically, and the ship model now appears in the 3D view. We're now ready to use the grouped vectors placed on the ship layer. Turn on the visibility of the ship layer. Turn off the visibility of the bitmap layer. Select the vectors and shift click the newly created component in level one. With both objects selected, click on the clear area of selected component outside selected vectors tool and observe what happens in the 3D view. We have removed the unnecessary regions external to the ship, allowing us an unobstructed view of the modeling plane outside of the ship component. Let's move on to creating the dish component. I will first show you how to create a dish if you are using Vectric Aspire, but afterwards I'll show you how to do the same thing using Vectric VCarve. Activate and turn on the visibility of the dish layer, and turn off the visibility of the other layers. Select the ellipse and click on the Create Shape tool. In the Shape Profile section, Various shape profiles are available to choose from. For this project, choose the curved profile. Next, we need to choose an angle. The angle represents the steepness of ascent or descent that the shape's edges make relative to the base. Positive angles will create an elevated shape, and negative angles will create a recessed shape. We're going to use a plus 30 angle. But experiment on your own to see how the different angles change the shape of the 3D component. Put the base height at 0 inches, but choose Scale to Exact Height in the Final Height section. Since the material thickness is 0 0.75 inches, and we are going to create a dish shape that recesses into the material, it's important to ensure adequate material remains below the deepest portion of the dish. By setting the height to 0.5 inches, we assure that at least 0.25 inches remains below every part of the dish. Leave Tilt unchecked, set the Combine Mode to Subtract, name the component Dish, click Apply, then close the tool. In order to better visualize our dish in the material, and to assure that the software will create a smooth, sharp transition from the dish edge to the material surface when the tool paths are created, we need to add a zero plane. A zero plane is a component that is the size of the job setup with zero thickness. Click the trapezoidal shaped tool at the top right in the modeling tool section to create the plane. It is now easier to see what the project looks like in the 3D view. Note that a new zero plane layer was automatically created with the visibility turned off. The pale area in the 3D view represents the modeling plane. For those using Vectric VCarve, in order to create a dish component, go to Domes Dishes in the Clipart tab and import Dome Dish 30. Using the appropriate tool in the Transform Objects section, uncheck the Link XY box, set the width and height to 8.75 inches and 11 inches respectively, check Auto Scale Z, click Apply, and then close the tool. Set the Combine Mode of the Dome component to Subtract, and the dish is almost complete. Rename the component Dish, Select it, and now change the model height to 0.5 inches using the Scale Model Height tool. We now have a dish identical to the dish we created from scratch in Aspire. Just as in Aspire, don't forget to add a zero plane. Moving along, maximize the 3D view and take a closer look at the project. Let's enlarge the ship to fill up more of the dish by putting the ship component in transform mode, resizing the ship, and placing it pleasingly in the dish. 
Now, open the Component Properties panel by clicking the blue rectangle while in Transform mode. Since the dish measures 0.5 inches in maximum depth, let's use that depth and increase the height of the ship component to fill the space, yet keep the component below the dish surface in order to avoid flat spots on the ship after we create the tool paths. Add a small base height of 0.03 inches. To increase the definition of the boundary of the ship in the dish, and set the shape height to 0.45 inches. This will give a total height of 0.48 inches to the ship component. Examining the 3D view, the light green areas are below the modeling plane, but the dark green areas are above the modeling plane. The red areas can be ignored since we are only interested in the areas of the component within the dish. If we create tool paths for this model, the dark green areas will be carved flat, essentially removing those areas of the model down to the surface of the material. So how do we solve this problem and get all of the dark green areas beneath the modeling plane below the top surface of the dish without uniformly decreasing the height of the entire ship component? By using the multiply mode. In order to do this, a bit of preparation is needed first. In the component tree, insert two new levels. Rename the original level Models in Dish. Rename Level 2 Multiply. And rename Level 3 Dish. Select the zero plane and dish components. Right click and duplicate. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the original components to the multiply level. Then select the duplicate components and drag them to the dish layer. Turn on the multiply level and turn off the other two levels. The dish is now seen in the 3D view. Change the combine mode of the dish component in this level to add and the dish is converted to a dome. Rename the component Dome and use the Component Properties tool to set the shape height to 1 inch. Calling upon your knowledge of the multiply mode that you learned in the last tutorial, what will happen if we change the combine mode of the multiply level to multiply? Since the dish level is turned off, there is no level below the multiply level to act upon, so it simply acts upon the modeling plane. Since the modeling plane has a thickness of zero, every point's height in the multiply level will be multiplied by zero, and the dome should essentially disappear. Let's see if our prediction is correct. Indeed it is. Now for the fun part. Turn off the multiply level, turn on the models in dish level, and change the 3D view to look down the x-axis. What should happen if we turn on the multiply level now? The pixel height of the ship model will change smoothly, going from 0% peripherally to 100% centrally. If you are having trouble understanding this, I urge you to go back to the previous tutorial and study it carefully until it makes sense. Let's turn the multiply level on and off repeatedly and observe the changes in the 3D view. Voila! The height of the ship component tapers in proportion to the changing depth of the dish. Now change the 3D view to look down the z-axis and turn on the dish level. The ship is now entirely below the modeling plane. If you make the ship component active, you can easily confirm this since the component areas within the dish are all now light green with no dark green areas visible. We can now tweak the ship's shape height further by selecting it and using the Component Properties tool to increase the height until a little area of dark green pops out and then backing the height back down a notch to assure that the highest area of the component is below the top of the dish.
We're now ready to create the toolpaths. Switch to the CAM portion of the software and check the material setup. The thickness, XY datum, and Z0 position are correct, but set the model position and material so that there is no gap above the model. This will ensure a smooth transition when cutting from the material surface into the recess for the dish. Make sure the Z gaps and home start position are safe for your setup and click OK. Tile the 2D and 3D views vertically. Select the ellipse vector and then select the 3D roughing toolpath. Choose a quarter inch end mill and make certain the settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. Set the machining limit boundary to selected vectors with no boundary offset. Set a small machining allowance of 0.04 inches, a Z-level roughing strategy with raster direction along the Y-axis, leave ramp plunge moves unchecked, name the toolpath appropriately, and calculate the toolpath. Now, preview the toolpath to make sure we see no obvious problems. Close the Preview Toolpaths panel and select the 3D Finishing Toolpath. For this toolpath, choose an eighth inch ball nose and make sure the settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. Choose the same settings in the machine limit boundary as we did for the 3D roughing toolpath. And in the area machine strategy, choose a raster pattern with a raster angle of 90 degrees. By choosing a raster pattern rather than an offset pattern, it is less likely that our small eighth inch ball nose bit will break since the toolpath starts at the boundary edge of the dish, cutting a shallower cut than if it began cutting in the center of the dish. In addition, the forces applied to the bit will also be less since only one side of the bit will be cutting material in the beginning of the cut compared to an offset pattern beginning in the center of the material. Let's now rename the toolpath appropriately. Calculate and preview the selected toolpath. Since everything looks great, the toolpaths can be saved and sent to the CNC. I hope you enjoyed learning how to create a nice 3D project incorporating a model placed in a recessed dish. If you like this video, please support my efforts by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel, and clicking the notification bell so you can watch my next video as soon as it becomes available. See you next time.